gonna have uh, Dev Messiahs. I don't know how how will he present himself. <laughs> I think he's gonna talk about uh, Python uh, Python abstract syntax tree. Hi, Bruno. How should I call you, Dev Messiahs or Bruno Messiahs? What's your favorite? <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you can call me Messiah's Messi because uh, every time Messi. that I I, I I arrive in a place, there is another Bruno that arriving first, like uh, the the Maccabees that organize the, the event. <laughs> no, very cool. Okay, so I'll call you Messi Messiah's. Uh, okay, so have fun with your talk, and then I'll come back later with yeah. questions from audience. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Bruno Messias. And everyone's uh, called me by Messi. And today I will talk about how we can uh, use Python ISDs to find and create Gambiarras. And uh, uh, I work as a software engineer at IB Wall. And most of the time I work with Python, JavaScript, data science, and, and graphs. And because of that, I need to deal with different projects with different code style guides and different persons from different backgrounds. And uh, uh, if he, there is uh, probably most of the people don't know what it, what it means, uh, Gambiarra. And here we have some pictures. Gambiarras are quick fix to do some stuff in a, in a faster or in a fun way that can be used to cook. To, to, in Brazil, you need to quickly escape from the Brazilian policy sometimes. And also when you run, for example, uh, Python, uh, the older versions of Python, there is some gambiarras in the in the code base of CPython. That uh, there is a, this is this really good talk made by Alison Kupter. And this is the the meaning of gambiarra: doing something in a quick in a quick way and to achieve a goal. Well, uh, I want to start with a, a short introduction, and I want to start with some philosophy and some Russian literature. Uh, I think that everyone that uh, uh, study computer science uh, for fun or for or in academia found this statement somewhere. The limits of my language mean the limits of my world, which is uh, was made by Ludwig Wittgenstein in his first phrase. And this statement is very popular, it's very powerful because they, they, they help us to understand what we mean by a language and how we can uh, understand how powerful our, our languages are. And we can bring this statement, I think, about some stuff that probably everyone already has some kind of head issue with these and have some trouble. For example, when we need to find something in our code base, usually what we do, we type control F, we type a pattern, and we pray to find the result of that we are looking for. But this is not good because I think everyone already tried to find a, 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 a complex pattern in a code base, and this is very hard. For example, suppose that you want to find uh, recursion patterns in your source in your source code using just uh, 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 typing in the code is completely uh, un unusable. You don't you won't achieve anything with that. And this is kind of a symptom of this is uh, of a, using a, a wrong language to do a a, 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 a a task, a different task. We need to choose wisely which language we use to do that. And also, the this statement of Lindenstein style brings some kind of uh, uh, philosophical meaning for language because Lindenstein style start to think about language are living be are as a living beings. And, and because of that, we can also bring that to computer science. And we can think our code base should be a living thing, being or not. And when we uh, bring this question, why we cannot write a code for, to write code for us? And this, we enter using uh, uh, answer this question affirmatively. We are entering the helm of the meta programming that he will be one of the talks that I will talk in this in this presentation about the Gambiarras. And I want to show two examples that are very common in data science, not using a uh, metaprogram because I think most of the people don't use that, but uh, SKLR is a very famous uh, library uh, to do machine learning model, models. And there are two uh, things that always uh, annoy me, annoy me. 
One of them is the grid search, which is a kind of a machine learning technique to find the best parameters of a machine learning model. And the other is uh, how we can combine different pipelines in a scalar. Those two uh, uh, trivial things, when you look carefully in the code base, you can find very, I, don't, I will not say bad practice of code, but uh, things that uh, we can improve with doing some kind of Gambia. Uh, the, the first uh, thing was appointed me by a very, a very uh, big name in, in machine learning operations in Brazil, called Ma Michael Scott, he's worker for XP Investment. He said to me, ah, look in the code base of Scalar in this file, and you will see some problems there. And I look at it and I found a thing very interesting because when we look in the code base, we discover that uh, uh, Scalar perform, uh, validates the data for every call. And because of that, when we create a, a read parameter source, for example, like the example that I showed you before, Scalar will call the validation, validate data for each combination of parameters. And because that, if you have a grid of uh, 1,000 by 1,000 of parameters, you have a, a 10, 10, 11, 1 million of uh, calling validate that data method. And there is a problem with that because when you create a grid, uh, unless you are a crazy guy, you will create a grid knowing that the grid is valid. And because that, you are just in consume computational resource with no with no reason. We need to, it's not a wise to, to do that. Imagine this for a real world model, a model with hundreds of thousands of parameters to, 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 to source. This, this is not good, we can improve that. And about real literature, I think it, uh, the, one of the most famous books, uh, 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 written by Tolstoy is Anna Karenina. And Anna Karenina starts with, with a sentence that is that this sentence half families are our alike, and every unhappy family is unhappy in, in its own way. And why I bring in uh, Russian literature to, to uh, for a talk of a computer science for a programming language? Well, because Anna Karenina is a really powerful book because the Anna Karenina uh, 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 created the principle of Anna Karenina. And which is, what, what is this principle? This principle, the people start to notice that this principle that Tolstoy uh, uh, bring to the book is more common in different areas of, uh, of the, the humanity. For example, when we study statistics, we have an Ukrainian principle related with the violation of the new hypothesis. And because that, we have an Ukrainian principle in data science. And also, we have an Ukrainian principle in the catastrophe theory, for example, in, in engineering, and when you are trying to build a really complex system, the Ukrainian principle appears that uh, also appears, appears in, this, in this area of knowledge because when you think about an Ukrainian, we think that uh, we need just one uh, a violation of a set of rules to create an unhappy situation or a, a, online, a situation that we, no one uh, wants to, to live there. And there is another uh, areas of uh, human knowledge that uh, study the Ukrainian principle. And I want to bring that to code quality analysis, because when we start to think uh, to, to bring this kind of uh, principle to coding, we can uh, create some questions, very simple questions. For example, are all projects alike? Always not. And the other question that we can, I think everyone that works with uh, different uh, languages have some trouble with that when we need to create new rules in some kind, some linter, for example, in Python, Flake 8 is the most famous. And it's very hard. And the other thing that we can bring the Ukrainian principle is because the Ukrainian principle is uh, put a statement that we need to define a set of uh, conditions to define a hack family. But we need, we have some problem with that. Who defines this set of rules? rules to, to, to a family to be happy. And we can think about that when we think about PEP8, when we think as in JavaScript, 
all those all those uh, uh, code style guides are created for by some soft engineers from very specific companies, and we can think that is this is this is this right because a set of rules created by those people not necessarily is good for everyone. And we can see a really clear example when we look for Python and PEP8, because Python has a really nasty uh, feature or bug called mutable defaults. And here I have a, a I have a link to. Let me show you. Exactly that we can see the mutable defaults uh, here. No. I delete the example. Oh, I delete the example. Sorry, I delete the example. Uh, but the middle of the photos is like, uh, let me show here. Um, okay. Mutable defaults are, is that, is when you create a, a function, and in this function you pass a def, a, as an argument, a, a default argument, uh, 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 one of the arguments are, are mutable. And because of that, it, the Python, the, the function behaves as, like as the function has some kind of memory about the previous calls. And this is very bad because we don't want that functions be uh, have side effects or have some kind of strange memory about your application. But uh, for some reason, the people who created the 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 uh, the, flake, uh, the flake eight and the and created the flake, the the pep eight style code guide choose it that this is not uh, a pattern to be blocked by the linter which uh, I think this is very bad. And when you try to extend that, when you try to create a, a new rule in Flake 8 to, to block this behavior, we have a trouble because it's very hard. We need to create a package. We need to create a, a, a specific source code using ST transformers and so on and so forth. This is hard. We can do escalate that for several rules. And this is bad because when you think about Tolstoy, Wittgenstein, this is not a good language, this is not a good way to do that, this is not uh, very happy to do that. And we, we're thinking about uh, this famous meme that uh, we have two, just two options, or we became very serious about the following the path eight rules and using linkers like Flake 8, Aslink, or we don't give a, a, a we don't, uh, com complain about that, we don't worry about that, and we have uh, some kind of happiness in our code base. But this is not good, we need some, some kind of uh, equilibrium point between the two approaches. And what I'm proposing there, here, is that we have an equilibrium principle in code quality analysis. I think this is uh, uh, clear. And I have a solution to that, I developed a solution based on this principle, in this philosophical principle, that I call it pi asterisk. And I bring this uh, this solution with uh, a simple statement that simple products are all alike, and each complex project is complex in its own way. And when we I bring it, uh, I start to develop Plastix with this principle in mind. I choose it to have flexibility to define new rules and information in linkers. I also choose that uh, if someone wants to change my my linker, they, this needs to be very easy. They don't need to call the specific package for that. This needs to be made it very easy and fast. And that uh, the most important one, I will not say for no ones which is good and which is bad. It depends on you. It depends on your project. And I think this is, is a more hap situation. And doing that, we have some kind of uh, equilibrium point. And here we have an example how Pastix works. Uh, here I created a, a, a specific rule to, uh, to block the mutable defaults. And here you have an XPath that because uh, Pastix works using XPath to, to find the, the patterns in your code base. 
And it's very easy. Instead of writing uh, almost 100 lines of code and create a Python package, we just need to write us, uh, just a single line of uh, uh, XPath expression. Well, this is the introduction of my talk, and I will go to the summary of my presentation. The first part, I will talk about how we can create Gambi ads, and I will bring some questions and bring some uh, understanding about the, the, the Python ST and metaprogramming. And also, I will show the, the specific case that we can use uh, ST to, to correct, to, to create this kind of Gambi ads in S color. Second part, I will talk about by Pyastrix. And Pyastrix is kind of a tool to find Gambias with the same techniques to be, that we use to uh, create metaprogramming in, our, in Python. And because of that, I will talk a, a little bit again about the anchoring principle and the correct limitations of the code and qualities. And after that, I will talk about uh, a little about future. Well, the part one, I think uh, the most important question that uh, creates some kind of noise in the, in the Python community is if that Python is an interpreted or compiled language. Well, when you think deeply about this, this doesn't make it so much sense today because most of the compiler, uh, most of the program languages use kind of a mix between a compiler and an interpre interpreter phase. And I recommend this really good uh, uh, publication and very funny that uh, some kind of cartoons to explain that. And the, the answer is that Python is both compiled and interpreted. And this is good, very good, because when we look into the pipeline of how a, a, a piece of Python code is, is, uh, is compiled and interpreted by the C Python virtual machine, we have this. And the, the important part for this talk would be just that, which is the compile phase of the Python, the Python machine. And here we are focused on this guy, the ST. And what is the ST? Let's go back to the human language. When we think about sentences in human language, like Portuguese, English, one way to analyze a sentence in a, in a formal way is to break the, the sentence in small blocks and each block has some kind of specific meaning, has some kind of specific structure. This structure that I'm showing you here is called a syntax tree. And when we bring this concept to, to computer science, this is called an abstract syntax tree. And why this is powerful? Because when we have abstract syntax tree, we have some kind of well format, format, formatted uh, uh, structure to, to analyze and to change our code. For example, here we have a very simple piece of code uh, of Python, and I show you how you can uh, see the, the the abstract syntax tree. And I uh, I want to like to I will give some spoilers uh, with PyStrix because PyStrix is a tool to to find Gambias, but also a tool to understand Gambias. For example, here I I will call PyStrix to to open this file. And I will show you the, the, the abstract syntax tree of this piece of code. And here you have the abstract syntax tree. It, it doesn't seem very good. It doesn't seem very easy to understand. But I assure you that it's, very, it's, more, it's, it's easier to manipulate this than manipulate a piece of code to do at the program. And uh, when we look to the uh, representation of this abstract syntax tree, we have this for this piece of code, which each element here in, in blue is a node of the abstract syntax tree. And this is the, the, the at a, a very important point, what is a node in abstract syntax tree? In Python, a node is a class whose the base class is uh, stst. A node uh, has attributes in Python and each attribute can be uh, another attribute or a field. And st is just a tree of nodes. Well, in Python, as the attributes can be a line number, can be a column offset, can be the end of the line number, and can be the end of the column offset. And each field in, the, in a node can be also another node. And this is important, a field can be a node. 
and can be a tomb type like an integer, a string, object, or a boolean, or a make file. We have more different fields, fields in Python, and you can look for the different fields in the full grammar specification of Python. Or in this post that I made some time ago to talk a, a, a little bit about uh, Python STs. Or, uh, the, but, but by my best recommendation is, is this book, which is a really, really good book about the C Python virtual machine. And you can find everything inside that. Well, let's do it our hands. Let's see how we can do this kind of manipulation with the uh, code, a uh, uh, meta program using manipulation as, as easy Python. Well, I show you this example. I say this is very bad because this call every time the validation data function in sklearn library, but we can do better. We can pass it to. We can ask it to, 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 to Python to manipulate the code base and change the the the, 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 the SQLine code base for us. And what how we can do that? Well, Python has the ST mod module, and the ST module ha has this guy, node transformer. And this guy is like a, a, a handle walker, handle walker, a walker who, who will walk in your abstract syntax tree. And we will visit each node of your abstract syntax tree. And each uh, visitation is defined by a method. For example, here we have a visitation in a node that has a, it's a call, has a, a call type. And what we can do to perform meta program in Python is asking to this node transformer class every time that he find the, the, the uh, a node, a node which is a function and which has attribute validate data, we will ask it to this guy the following. Well, get pick this, this node related with the calling of this function, uh, copy all the information about the location of this node in the code base, and we will ask him to replace with a, with a new node. And is that is that what I'm doing here? I create a new node which it does nothing, it's just a uh, Call the function, but just return the, the, the same values that I passed. And I will ask the guy to replace the node. I don't want the node from SQL. I want my node. I want my method program test. And when we do that, we have a really good, uh, uh, we can improve the performance of SQL because we can remove the, this uh, unnecessary calls with just dumb calls. And how we can uh, uh, transform the code uh, back to uh, 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 IST, back to a, a source code? Well, it's very simple. Here, I just uh, ask it to the, the Python spec module to get the source code of the base.py. And after that, I created the abstract syntax tree that here I call a tree method. And after that, I, I create a transformer well, using this class. And then after that, I ask it to my transformer to visit my tree, my abstract syntax tree, and do this kind of replacement. And after that, I can replace the, the I can transform back the abstract syntax tree to the a source code in, in SCALA. The other thing we can do is introspect. Uh, now let me show here. The other thing we can do that is It, it's because, like I said, uh, in, uh, in SQLR, we have this kind of pipelines and function transformers, but they are very rigid and very hard to understand what is happening behind the doors. And what you can do is create a kind of a, a node transformer that will introspect in the function and will extract the information that we want in this pipeline to, to create some kind of plot using matplotlib or perform some kind of statical measure. And this is not very, this is a little bit hard because we need to compile the function. But the uh, message that I want to pass you here that uh, when you use node transform, when you use ST manipulation, you have a, a powerful way to manipulate your world. You have, a, you don't be, will be uh, jailed by restrictions of SQLR or any kind of library. You can uh, improve your life, you can be more happy with your code base. 
Well, and I think this is a solution. And as I said before, we can think that if this solution is good or not, or if it is very dirty, but the question is, is very simple. Should we always take Python seriously? And I think the answer is not. If you want to understand why I put this image here, you can watch the, the, like, the talk made by Alison Kupter. And I think this is good. We shouldn't take Python serious, and because of that, we are we can do metaprogramming without any kind of rules about being too formal. Here I have a set of different links that if you want to see more interesting things, how to use ST manipulation to improve your life. Now the second part I you do, I, I talked uh, before about how to create Gambias with ST manipulation, and now I want to talk about how we can find that. And this is uh, very common because when we, I think everyone, every software engineer, every data scientist, wants to check the same pattern in a merge request review, especially if you have a, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, people that uh, started a new position, and we need to do that uh, several uh, several times. And it is very bad because we are just, uh, when we do that, we are just a human linker. We should do, do that. We, sh we should delegate that for our, for our software. And we bring back the anchoring principle because every time that we check a merge request and this was not uh, blocked uh, by default by the, the, by the pipelines in our repository, we are seeing the anchoring principle. And PySpeak do this in a very clever way because what you do, well, I will show how do we, uh, uh, why, how uh, uh, Pastix does this task, completes this task without uh, creating too much noise in your in your mind, because he's very flexible to define rules. It's easy to configure, and I will not make a, your, uh, uh, I will not say who is good for you or not. And how Pastix works? Well, as I said, we have. Uh, uh, a YAML file that uh, is here. This is the main, this is the conf uh, configuration file of PySpeak, and here we have uh, several parameters that we can configure. For example, if you want to have interactive files, if you want to normalize the ST, I used to talk about here, about this a little bit. If you have one par parallel execution, if you have a, a quiet uh, output or not, and here we have the rules that we are defining our hack code base. And here, for example, we have the mutable defaults that I talked before. But I also have this uh, 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 simple method to, to find recursion patterns in class definitions. And see that it's very simple. We can create several rules here. And for example, if I want to uh, open path tricks with a specific file that I already showed you, but we can also opening the passage in a, in a, in a directory, ah, no, here, yeah. sorry. Here I open, I open passage in the dumb examples directory, and I you asking for a passage, for example, to source using all the rules that I showed you in the file, and here we have the the, 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 match, the patterns that they, they found. For example, here they found a, a, a user of built-ins in the definition of function, user of mutable defaults, and so on and so forth. And we can also the, uh, source using specific set of rules. For example, we can type, the, if I want just to look for defaults, I can just type defaults. That is, a, I will explain that. And here we will look for the, the mutable defaults in the code base. And how this how PathTix works? Well, I think everyone has already worked at some time with XPath, and XPath is kind of, is a language to find patterns and extract values from XML files. And XPath are very common in web scrapping. I think everyone who opened uh, the uh, inspector elements are already the notes of the XPath expressions. And we can bring that for our code quality analysis because when we think about uh, ST, obviously ST is a tree. And XML can be used to represent a tree. And we know that we can use XPath to, to, to easily navigate in an XML file. Well, the, the, the solution is quite simple now because 
If that, we can just uh, analyze your code base, not using uh, uh, the solutions like the code that use the ST node transfer, but instead of that, we can use XPath to understand your code base. And how we can do that is because here I, I have the interface, the client interface of uh, uh, Pathlips, and uh, I will show something here. I will open a file here that I want to analyze. And you ask about uh, here. I have some pop -up, pop -up hey, options. Show. Oh. Sorry to interrupt. Just to say, we have five minutes to the next talk. Just, just. So ah, okay. Five minutes. <laughs> I'm finishing. Yeah, here you have some top options, and you can see that we have uh, uh, option to show ST and show XML. And what is this XML? Is a representation in XML of the uh, abstract syntax tree. And this is far more easy to navigate and to, to look for patterns in your code base. And we have this, and the, the prefix has a, a really friendly interface. We can select, select the specific rules, we can navigate in the files. And here we have the example about the transformation in, of the ST in the XML ST. And that, the practice was developed with the idea to be a, a linter to be used uh, anywhere. Because when you think about Python 3.7, 3.8, each version of Python has a different grammar, like uh, Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese have different grammar. But we have a, 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 a we formed some years ago that uh, put all the languages in the same background. And we have that in Python. We have a library called Guest that can normalize the ST and turn each ST in the same, using the same grammar. And because that we have some kind of unified ST representation for any kind of Python source code. And what do I do after that? I transform the ST in XML. And after that, instead of using pure XML, I use LXML that allows us to create LXML extensions that can create arbitrary function scale inside of the XPath, which is very good. And after that, we have happiness because we are very have very uh, powerful tools and techniques to analyze our code base. In the future, I I hope that we can bring in some plugins, for example, to be pop, uh, to be used in Rust, uh, JS, and C. And that here, the I put the link for the plastics if you want to contribute or, or look for more information. I, as I said, I work for IDU all. They have open positions available. If you learn, if you know Portuguese and English, we are welcome. And that's a, that is. You have enjoyed, and if you want any doubt, you can reach me on email or or on my website. Thanks a lot, Bruno. It's a very nice talk. <laughs> and okay, thanks. I think one of the things you mentioned that that is that is I think is a nice thing is. Philosophy and, and lit lit literature is not outside programming. You should do that because it adds up a lot to programming. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, sir, um, we should ignore that. And I think it is a better thing when a, a programmer or a software engineer ignore that she needs to study the philosophy, she needs to read some books because the big guys always do that. They always study things different from of a computer, of math. You need to. Yeah. Scratch your, your mind. Yeah. Thanks a lot again. Uh, we're we're up for the the next talk on time. But thanks a lot for the the, the talk on ASP for Python. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs>